likely that there's going to be some more bad news, unfortunately. Those numbers have risen since the since you've seen them. So there, there are now more. My figures, the latest numbers are 291 residents, uh, 281 staff in 71 facilities. So um, it's, it's going to continue. And as uh, Ian Yates said to you a moment ago, the only way that we're genuinely going to get this under control and to stop it is to stop the community spread because the aged care sector and residents in residential aged care are victims of the community spread. Mm. Just to clarify that, Minister, so 291 residents uh, now have COVID, 281 staff also have COVID, that's correct? They're the latest figures They're that latest I had figures. as of last night. Okay, and, and have there been more deaths since last night? Look, I haven't seen anything from this morning from overnight, but tr tragically, just on the numbers, that's what's going to occur. I think we've had that conversation before. There is a lot more bad news that's going to come out of mm. Victoria, but the aged care sector in particular, because we know that once uh, someone in their senior years with a number of comorbidities, these are the people that are in residential aged care, uh, this virus has a devastating effect on them. As you pointed out, if it is staff that's moving around the different facilities that are the problem, why not stop them from moving around to different facilities? Well, the, the aged care sector and the unions have actually come to an agreement that uh, starts as of today to do just that, uh, and we'll support that so that staff aren't disadvantaged. Uh, and that, that agreement's been worked out over the last week or so between the unions and the residential aged care, care sector at the request of the Victorian and the Australian governments. But I'm uh, really pleased that they've been cooperative and worked together in that sense. That's an important um, element of trying to prevent the spread of the virus. But as I've said a number of times, uh, and it's the sad truth, the, uh, the, the ingress of the virus into aged care is purely a function of community spread. So, so where's the problem been here? Have staff not had temperature checks? I mean, it, it seems logical that, that you shouldn't have these, these staff members moving to different facilities in the first place. So, so where has the shortfall been? Where has the failure been here? Look, I don't think it's a matter of failure on any particular individual or, or system. The, the, the problem is that people are infectious with this virus before they have symptoms. And so that 48 hours before symptoms start to show, before they have a temperature, uh, they are shedding virus and they are infectious. So they're catching the virus in the community and overwhelmingly what we're seeing mm. is that staff are catching the virus, they're incubating at home in the community groups, uh, they're going to work, they don't know that they're sick uh, and unfortunately by the time they do realise that they're sick, most the damage is done. Uh, the virus has been spread to people that they're working with and the residents in the facilities. Uh, and uh, we're seeing now the very, very tragic results of that. So until we get uh, the community spread down, we're unfortunately going to see a continuation of this. This is one of the reasons that we asked a couple of weeks ago that all staff in residential aged care in Victoria wore a mask. That's another barrier to try and prevent uh, the spread of the virus. And it's another reason for the uh, work that the, mm. that the industry have done with the unions to minimise staff working across more than one facility. And it's not just, can I say, it's not just personal care workers, uh, it's nurses and it's other health professionals that are working across the sector as well. Uh, so there's a lot of characterisation of the sector being uh, the personal care workers spreading the virus and being responsible uh, being yeah. the ones that are carrying it in. It's not just them. There are a number of professionals who work across the sector and none of them are immune from the virus. Uh, well, as I said in the, the introduction, uh, there are those reports in the Herald Sun today, Minister, that suggest the insufficient levels of personal protective equipment. 1,300 providers had apparently asked for access to federal PPE stocks by May and the Department of Health said facilities should have sufficient levels on hand. So it does seem that there is a level of unpreparedness when it comes to this, which, which seems quite shocking when you think about uh, the fiasco uh, at the Newmarch House um, earlier this year. So are facilities underprepared? Well, look, let's go back to the, the time when this circumstance existed in May. 
uh, we were in the middle of the first wave of the virus. There was a global shortage of PPE, uh, and there were a lot of facilities who were asking us for PPE, uh, and we were making sure that those that genuinely needed it, particularly those that had an outbreak, had access to it. Uh, the circumstance is very, very different now. There is no shortage of PPE. We put five million masks into Victoria the week before last so that every aged care worker in Victoria could uh, have access to one because it was re requested that they did. It was mandated. Uh, the advice from the aged PPC was that every worker should wear a mask. Uh, there is no shortage now, and I don't think it's fair or reasonable to compare what was happening back in May when the circumstances were completely different with respect to the availability of PPE and and um, hand sanitizer, for example. There is no shortage now. It's available. We have had some supply chain issues in getting the supplies out, but it is also the responsibility of aged care providers to have adequate uh, stocks of PPE. So the department is right to say that. It is the responsibility of providers to have adequate stocks. We're very happy to provide backfill and to ensure that it's available for workers in the current circumstance where we're saying they have to wear it. The AMA says it's systematic underfunding, workforce issues, accreditations, everything highlighted in the Royal Commission that underpins a lot of the problems that are happening at the moment. Is that right? Uh, Peter, the circumstance with COVID-19 in residential aged care facilities right now is purely a function of community spread. Do we know that there are issues to deal with in aged care? Of course we do. That's why we called the Royal Commission. Uh, we put the Royal Commission in place so that we could use the recommendations that came from that mm. to improve the system, and that's what we'll do. But the circumstance that we have right now is purely a function of community spread of COVID-19 and people who are asymptomatic, who don't know they have the virus, going to work and unfortunately spreading it yeah. within the facilities. It's not a matter of fault on any one circumstance uh, and then we on so to help manage that we are throwing enormous resources at the uh, to the sector assisting the sector and that's why we stood up the response unit over the weekends uh, to ensure that the effort that we are putting into victoria is coordinated as best as possible we have experience that's come in from emergency management from victoria and from the commonwealth uh, alongside the Quality and Safety Commission, alongside my department, the DHHS in Victoria, uh, and the sector themselves, so that the response that we have to what's happening in, in Victoria as a, as, as a uh, result of community spread is as effective as it possibly can be.